It's safe to walk your dog in Portland, Oregon right now. You might be taxed for it, but at least you won't be called a misogynist. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of the most pleasurable follow-ups I've ever gotten to do, and yet at the same time it does present some ethical challenges. So it all started for me back in June when I saw a report about a so-called study that was called, get this, Human Reactions to Rape Culture and Queer Performativity at Urban Dog Parks in Portland, Oregon, end quote. And it was published in the leftist academic journal, which 99.99 stretched that into infinity percent of the academic journals are leftist, called <clears throat> Gender, Place, and Culture. <laughs> yeah, enjoy reading that one before bed. And the report was written by a woman named Helen Wilson. Well, I'm happy to offer the follow-up right now because that writer and two other individuals working with her recently spilled the beans. In fact, the author of the study is not named Helen Wilson. The study is completely bogus and her real name is Helen Pluckrose. Dear Dr. Helen Wilson, <laughs> I have now closely considered the revisions of your manuscript, Dog Park. And <laughs> and will recommend its publication in Gender, Place, and Culture. You have done very good work to address the issues your viewers raised and have clarified your arguments. Thank you for your contribution to Gender, Place, and Culture, and I hope to be seeing your manuscript in print. Yours truly, PhD, Managing Editor, Gender, Place, and Culture. We have an accepted paper in the number one feminist geography journal. And she is one of those three renegade academics who teamed up two years ago to intentionally write fake pseudo-intellectual, pseudoscience so-called studies and see if these monolithic academic journals would start to publish them. I, along with two other concerned academics, Peter Bergoshin and Helen Pluckrose, have been writing intentionally broken academic papers and submitting them to highly respected journals in fields that study gender, race, sexuality, and similar topics. And they did. 20 times they published these things. Yes, and while this does present the ethical challenge of wondering whether or not it is acceptable for people to fake studies in order to expose an entirely huge fraudulent branch of so-called academia, it sure does offer <laughs> a really, really strong gut reaction of pleasure. Because many of us have been frustrated for years about the way academia leans left, the way these journals are monolithic, they only accept leftist, social justice warrior, identity politics types of studies. The authors, Helen Pluckrose, a man named David Lindsay, and a man named Peter Bogosian, they even sneaked in portions of Hitler's Mein Kampf and the editors at some of these journals accepted 20 of these things. We rewrote a section of Mein Kampf as intersectional feminism and this journal has accepted it. As Lindsay said, this problem has arisen within a culture in which dissenting ideas have not been admitted or tolerated, often resulting in legitimate criticism being denigrated on moral grounds. For example, questioning tenets of feminist philosophy might get you branded sexist or accused of carrying internalized misogyny. There you go, it's internalized. We will describe for you what you really mean. So, just ask people like Jordan Peterson, or Stefan Molyneux, or others who are in academia, or writing, or in entertainment. Ask me, I've experienced this. Ask students who have experienced this, or teachers who have experienced this in academia. And, by the way, Lindsay reported that he and his colleagues realized that there seems to be a, an almost religious architecture, as he calls it, to the socialist academics, wherein virtually any rotten treatment of people can be excused if the target can be vilified. There's this kind of like religious architecture in their mind where privilege is sin, privilege is evil, and then they've identified education as the place where it has to be fixed. So you can come up with these really nasty arguments like well, let's put white kids in chains in the floor at school as an educational opportunity. And if you frame it in terms of overcoming privilege and then you, you frame their, their resistance that, that they won't want this to happen to them, that they would complain about this. If you frame that in terms of, oh, they only complain about that because they're privileged and they can't handle it because their privilege made them weak. 
then it's right in. Wow, unbelievable. Now, this not only exposes these fraudulent academic journals, but it does something greater, I think. It shows us that the mindset behind these academic journals about fixing people for their own good and it's okay to engage in pseudoscience if it's for this greater good. This is the sort of thing that all sorts of totalitarian despots have engaged in for centuries. So hats off to these people engaging in something that could be seen as ethically questionable in order to expose the very ethically questionable field of so-called science. Very interesting stuff and so much to learn about from this. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and if you're watching on YouTube to hit the little button to find out when new videos are released. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.